So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're back on to uh, let's talk about following God's plan for, for your life. And uh, it's really a great privilege and an honor to once again be with us on this weekly uh, Monday chat. So let's pray. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today, another opportunity to partake of and to share your word together. Father, we receive today the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring alive and to bring to our consciousness the truth and the realities of the word of the Father in the name of Jesus. We expose our soul, our minds, we expose our spirit, the, our entire being to the living word of God that is able to save us. We receive illumination, we receive utterance, we receive direction, we receive clarity of mind and heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we are uh, going to be talking about obedience to God's pays rich dividend. Obedience to God pays rich dividends. Okay. It's, it's, it's a continuation of the series um, that we've been doing. Last week, we took a look at um, consecration to the plan and to the will of God, consecration to the plan and the will of God. But today we're going to be taking a look at obedience to God pays rich dividends. Okay. So very, um, very, very quickly, we're just going to be continuing and we're going to take a look at the scripture in Isaiah chapter one. I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter one, verse 19. Isaiah chapter one, verse 19. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now, one of the things I want you to take note of, okay, is the fact that it says, if you are willing and obedient, the word if there denotes conditionality. In other words, it is conditional, all right? You eating the good of the land is, is based upon two things. It's based upon your willingness and is based upon your obedience. Two things, your willingness and your obedience. That means that it is not just good enough for us to obey, okay, God in his word, but that part of us being willing. And that was why last week we started or we continued in our series. We went on to talking about our consecration where Jesus went on to say and to actually pray, you know, he said, it, my, my, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Okay. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. That means that God wants your will involved in your obedience. Okay. There is no have obedience with God, okay? For, for obedience to be true obedience, there must be willingness. Your, 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 your will must be involved in it. So you see there, it says, if you are willing, Okay, if you are willing, why is the willing there first? Because like I said, there is no obedience without your willingness. There is no obedience without your willingness. So he says, if you are willing and obedience, it says there is going to be a result. And the result is that you, the believer, you will eat the good of the land. In other words, there is good to partake of. In other words, the plan of God is yours to actually fulfill, to live in, to enjoy, okay? However, there will be no fulfillment of God's will, all right, which we know. God said, I know the will that I think towards you. I know the plan that I have to for you. He says there are plans of peace, okay? So there is no peaceful plan that will be fulfilled if there is first no willingness. There first has to be a willingness. Hence comes in your consecration to the Lord, okay? There must be a willingness for there to be true obedience, all right? So he says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So God is not the one going to make you willing. Let me say that again. 
God is not the one who will make you willing. Okay? You see, if God were to be the one to make you willing, it then defeats the purpose of your willingness. Let me say that again. If God were to be the one to make you willing, okay, that means it defeats the purpose of you willing. It's no longer an issue of your will. It's now something that God makes you to do. And God does not enforce himself on people, okay? He does not enforce himself on us, all right? The Bible says if you are willing, in other words, this is a condition that if you submit yourself to, you will prosper. If you submit yourself to, you will partake, okay, of the plan and you will be be able to actually fulfill God's plan, okay? You, Bible says you will eat the good of the land. The good of the land is the will of God for you, okay? Second, um, third John verse two, third John verse two, what does he say? He says, I will above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So we know that prosperity of, of the soul, of the spirit, of the body is the will of God, okay? The pros, your, your all-round prosperity in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body is God's will for you. But now, Bible is saying there will be no prosperity if one, you are not willing, okay, willing to walk in accordance to the plans and the purpose of God and obedient to the plan of the father okay he said if there is no willingness okay if there is no obedience then you will not partake of the of the of the goodness of god so there has to be a combination of willingness as well as obedience i cannot emphasize that enough so some people actually think okay that scripture says you can never tell what god is going to do Okay, people think that you can't tell what God is going to do because serving God is is hard. Okay, some some people some people think that's what that scripture is saying. Some people some people will say you that you you never know if you're going to make it or not. Okay, no no no, it that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you are willing, it says if you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I'm going to read Amplified translation. Okay. Amplified translation puts it like this. It, it puts, it says that you will eat the best of the land. In other words, when you are obedient to the purpose, to the plans, to the intentions of the father, the Bible says in Amplified translation, it says you will eat the best of the land, you know? So K. David says you eat the good, but it's not just talking about the good. It's, it's actually saying there that you will eat the very best that God has to offer, okay? You will eat and you will have the best that God has for you, all right? That comes by you being willing. It comes by you being obedient. So there's more to willing to be, to, be, to, to, to being willing in God's plan for you than just you believing, okay? There's more to, for, um, to you fulfilling the plan of God for your life than you just um, believing and you receiving. No, it's not just about, you know, it's not just about I, I receive it, I claim it, I say it. No, no, no. There's more to, to you walking in the plan of God, fulfilling the plan of God, to you just believing and speaking it and confessing it and saying you have faith for it, okay? Your willingness is needed. God needs you to be willing. He needs you to want his will. He needs you to desire his will. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Okay, that is what that is what has become my food. That is what has become, that is what now consumes me. That is what I am full of. I am my, my, I'm full of the Father's will. Okay, I'm full of the Father's will. So if you want God's best, then you're going to have, okay, to trust in God's plan. Let me say that again. If you want God's best, then you are going to have to trust in God's plan. And that might work on, that might, that, that, that might, that might, that might not necessarily be, be, be something easy, okay? The plan of God is not something that you will necessarily be able to accomplish in your own ability, but that means that you, you will be able, you, 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 you'll be able to actually depend, okay, upon the ability of the greater one. That's why the Bible says, look, greater is he that is in you, okay? The greater one that is in you is meant to be depended upon. You're meant to be able 
able to rely upon him, to totally trust in him. Hallelujah. To be able to depend upon the wisdom of God that is in you. Hallelujah. Because the wisdom of God is in you. Bible says that Christ has been made unto us wisdom. Okay. So the wisdom of God is in you because Christ in you is the hope of glory. That means the wisdom of God in you is the hope to bring forth the glory. Okay. The anticipated glory of God that, that you so desire. So it is important for us to realize that. Okay. I'm going to read uh, Romans chapter 12, verse two. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. So if we're ever going to fulfill the plan of God, we must learn to be willing, okay, when it comes to God's plans for our lives. But for you to get to a plane of, place of willingness, you must come to a place of trusting, okay? So Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Okay, the word proves there means, it means to discern, it means to recognize, to see and to understand, okay? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, you notice that it's like there are three levels that we can actually operate in or function in when it comes to the plan of God for our lives. Okay, it first of all talks about you can walk in the good plan of God, and then there's the uh, there, there's there's what is called the acceptable, and then there's that which is the perfect will of God. Okay, that 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 was said in in, in that Romans that we just read. He said that good acceptable and perfect will of God. So we see there that if you are to walk in the good, okay, you can walk in the good, but there is also an acceptable, but there is more than acceptable, there is a perfect. There is that perfect will of God. Okay, so we are the ones in that sense, we are the ones to determine, okay, we are the ones to determine whether or not we want to stay what on we want to decide what side of the spectrum we're on. Are we going to stay on the good? Are we going to stay in the acceptable? Are we going to stay in the perfect will of God? Okay, because there's a good, there's an acceptable, and there is a perfect will of God. But we must determine where exactly in that spectrum we want to we want to stay. Are we staying when when it, we're just staying with the with the acceptable plan of God for your life? But there is a perfect plan. God has a perfect will for your life. You see, the perfect will of God. Okay, meaning we can actually fulfill. Let me tell you something. You can actually fulfill. You can completely, um, you can completely walk in, okay? You can accurately and excellently fulfill God's will, God's plan for your life, okay? It is not an impossibility. Let me tell you something. Scripture will never tell you to do, all right, something that is impossible to be done, Scripture will tell you to do what is possible to be done because you have the help of God. And the Bible says that with God, all things are possible. So you have the help of God. You have the help of his word. The Holy Spirit is there. Okay. The angels of God, they are at your assistance. They are there to assist you in fulfilling, in bringing forth the will of the Father. Okay. So you are not alone in the accomplishing of the plan or the will of God for your life. All right. So the Bible tells us that we are very much able to accomplish the will of God. But like Jesus said, not of ourselves, because Jesus said, of my own self, I can do nothing, okay? I can do nothing in my own ability, in my own self, okay? But he said that he is able to do all things. He can actually, like Paul said, I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. And you must come to that acknowledgement that you can do all things. You must come to the realization of that truth that your ability is in him who has called you. Hallelujah. His Bible says he has made you and called you an able minister of the New Testament, not of the letter that killeth, but of the spirit that gives life. So you are an able minister. To, to minister what? To minister the grace of God. To minister the purpose, the will of God, okay, in that to, unto the lives of men. Hallelujah. Now, it says, in Colossians, let's go to Colossians um, chapter 4. I'm going to read Colossians chapter 4. Now, Colossians chapter 4, I'm reading from the New King James translation, verse 12. New King James translation, verse 12. It says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a bond servant of Christ, greets you. Okay? Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. Is always laboring fervently for you in prayers. What is he praying about? He says that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This is a prayer I, 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 I love to pray. It's one of those scriptures that I pray um, regularly, you know, not just over myself, but over the saints. You know, Bible says there, it says that Epaphras is, 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 is one of, is a bond servant of Christ Jesus. And he says that there's something that he's always doing. He does it, he does it consistently. He, he does it with, with a fervent, with a fervency. And that is that he prays that the saints will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God, in all the will of God. He says, stand perfect and complete. So there is such a thing as us being able to stand perfect in the will of God. There is such a reality as us being able to stand complete in all the will of God. I'm going to read it to us in uh, in in TPT translation. The word the, the, the word will of of God there talks about the plan of God, the purposes of God. TPT translation. It says Epaphras, who is also from Colis sends his loving greetings. I can tell you that he is a true servant of Christ who always, look at that, who always labors and intercedes for you. His prayers are filled with a quest to God that you would grow and mature. He says that you would grow and mature, standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan for your life. That is awesome. That you will grow and mature, standing complete and perfect in not some, but all. In not some, okay, standing complete and perfect in the beauty of God's plan for your life. In other words, God has a beautiful plan for your life. And scripture is telling us that we can actually stand complete in that beautiful plan. Bible is telling us there that the good plan for your life is a beautiful plan. It's that you cannot, you see, you cannot, uh, you cannot ignore God's plans, okay, for your life and expect the beauty of God to be radiated in your life. You cannot ignore the plan of God for your life and expect the hand of God to be evident over your life. Okay? It's, it is important. God wants us to bring forth his beauty. God wants our lives to exude his beauty. I mean, think of it. God himself sprung creation into existence. The very God, the maker of the heavens and the earth that, that brought forth all of creation, that brought forth the, the, the varied colors of plants, that brought forth the different um, species and, and, and types of birds, the, the, the one that brought forth the different colors of the butterfly, that, 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 that created all these beautiful things that we see in nature. The one that did that is said, in his word, he said that he wants to bring forth the beauty of his plan over your life. That means that 
no matter how beautiful a plan you might have actually tried to maybe um, create and work out for your life, God has a more beautiful plan. <laughs> the plans of God for your life, they are more beautiful. They are far superior. They are far better. Okay? And God wants to make it seen. He wants to make it evident. Okay? Now, I remember that um, in some, some time ago, okay, okay let's, let's read that. Let's read Third John. I know I, I made mention of it, but let's go to Third John verse 2 and actually read it to you. Third John verse 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So, I remember that there was a time uh, in my life uh, when, you know, my, my health, I was not in good health, okay? And uh, I was not in God's perfect plan, okay? Now, the reason I said that is because good health is God's perfect plan. Now, I just read here, here I just read here the scripture, that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So health is God's perfect plan for us. So I was in ill health, okay? I was in ill health, I was sick, sick in the sense that I was, I was, I was bleeding. Okay. Now I remember then that, um, I went to, I thought of going, cause I'd done, I'd done, you know, I'd, I'd prayed about it. I'd meditated on scriptures, you know, receiving, uh, directions from, but initially I just left it. I just, you know, I was, I initially I was kind of like a discipline about it. I was like, it was going to go in his time and all that. But then I'm like two weeks, three weeks, you know, the flow of blood still continued, you know, and after a while I was like, okay, maybe, uh, you know, one, one really needs to take hold of this. And so when I decided to take hold of it and I started, you know, trusting God for wisdom, direction, how should I go about it? What should I do? You know, and in, in that, in all of that, I was reading scriptures and I was uh, meditating upon the word of God. And one of the things I realized was when I decided to go to the, uh, to the GP, I realized then that I actually had a decision. It was like within me, I was like, am I actually going to take these drugs? Now, taking drugs, there's nothing wrong with taking drugs, okay? It's not evil. Thank God for medical doctors and medical sciences, okay? However, I just felt like, mm, this is not what I'm meant to do. This is not the answer to this situation, okay? This is not the answer to the situation, all right? And in doing that, I, I went to the GP. I just wanted to know what exactly, they, what, what exactly they were going to say was going on. And, you know, the GP didn't, didn't really know what was going on themselves. They were like, oh, this, that, blah, blah. Then they gave me, they gave me a prescription. And in giving me the description, I remember prescription. I remember looking at the prescription, and it had so many negative side effects. And I was like, "Oh no, you don't!" You know, so many negative side effects. And I remember driving down all that while I was trusting God for wisdom for what to do. And I remember driving down from the GP back home. And as I was driving down, it was like, like the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said. I should stop taking a particular, um, I should stop eating a particular thing. And I was like, okay, so if I stop that, I'm, I'm actually going to stop it and, and, and we'll see from there. And I realized that the moment I stopped taking that food, I realized then that my, the blood stopped. And I'm talking of something that had been going on for weeks. Okay, the flow of blood was just as regular as it was, as it was like in the normal, maybe four days, five days kind of a thing, but it was on like that for weeks. So I was really losing blood and all that. But one thing I realized then was the moment I followed that witness of the Holy Spirit, the instruction given to me, the flow of blood ceased, it stopped. Now, what am I saying there? I'm talking about us being obedient. We're talking about obedience, paying rich dividends, okay? Following 
the instructions, the will of God for your life. You see, the Bible calls him the Alpha and the Omega, but he's also our in-between. That means that, okay, if, if this is where I am, but this is where God wants me to get to. But in between, I must also be willing to listen to what he has to say to me. I must also be ready to, to realize that his judgments are the best judgments for me. Okay, what he said, I must learn to trust in his judgments. Okay, I must learn to trust in what he has to say. All right, because it is important if you don't trust then there is no obedience. You can't obey, okay, when you don't trust, okay? So, for example, I remember there's this, uh, there's this game, uh, or rather this activity, okay, that, 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 they, that people play when it comes to team building, you know? Uh, they tell you to, like, kind of, like, lean back and fall into the arms of people, you know? It's not as if they are ready to catch you, but you just have to believe they are ready to catch you. And the same way, you must be ready to let God catch you. You must be ready, and you must understand. In fact, scripture tells us that underneath us are his everlasting arms. Underneath us are his everlasting arms. So you must learn to depend upon God, that God knows. God has your back. God knows what is best, and he knows how best to get to the plans. You see, it's not just good enough for you to know the plan of God, but every step of the way, you must be ready to follow the one, okay, that actually has that grand design for your life. Right. So it is important. Our obedience to God is important. Your obedience to God is so important that it can save your life. It can save the life of a loved one. It can save the life you know, of, of people that you don't even know. You are in the place of prayer and, and, and you just have a burden. And if you ignore that burden, I remember there was once, you know, I, I, I was, I was in, I was, I had a burden. I was in uni then and, and I had a burden. I was meant to go for a lecture. I actually was already in the lecture theater and I was, um, I was meant to stay for the, for the lecture, but Halfway in, in, in the lecture, I just, I told myself, I just had to get out of there, okay, because I had such a burden in my heart, and I had to go to a place, okay, somewhere in sports center, then I remember to go and pray, which was just right behind my faculty then, and I went to go and pray, and I prayed in the spirit, not realizing I was actually praying my dad out of a fatal disaster, a car, a car crash, okay, the car, the car, the car did crash, it was a terrible car crash, but not one person was hurt. There was not a scratch on his body. Not even the driver was hurt. No one was hurt. The car was beyond repairs, but the lives were saved. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm saying about obedience, obedience, obedience. Your obedience can bring, it can bring forth the salvation of a loved one or even the salvation of someone you don't know. Okay. The salvation of someone you don't know. I remember there was once I was, um, I was, I was sleeping and uh, I woke up, I just woke up heavy in the middle of the night. You know, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I believe someone needs to hear this. It's not something I plan to talk about. But there was just someone, I, I, I woke up in the middle of the night with a burden in my heart. I didn't know why, but I was just praying according to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 26, downwards. And I was just praying, receiving the aid and the assistance of the Holy Spirit. And as I was praying, I realized that I, I, I started, I, I, I it was that I was groaning. And while I was praying later, I realized I, I sensed like a sense of joy. Okay. Afterwards, and I started to rejoice. And then just as I was, just as I was getting myself off the floor, I was in my house and all that, getting myself off the floor, I realized something. I felt like I was literally praying someone. Even when I was praying, I, I, I was feeling someone's hurt. And I felt like I was literally praying someone out of out of out of, out of suicide, committing suicide. Okay, you don't no, I don't know who the person is up to today. You might never know, but you, a day might come, you might know, okay? But whatever it is, the most important thing is that you are yielded, okay? You are you are given to obedience, okay? Obedience, okay, is a paramount piece of our fulfilling the plan of God. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, okay? Things fit into place. Everything has its place. Everything has its part to play, okay? So it is very, very important. So God wants to save you from disasters, okay, and even premature death. 
It wants you to be saved. Okay, I remember there was once, I'll never forget this uh, situation when myself and my husband then, uh, we were still in uni, not yet married, just going out together, um, you know, and I remember then that he came to visit me in uni then in UI, um, back home in Nigeria. And while we were walking, we were walking towards uh, towards the bus stop. And while we were walking, because it was talking, and I, I just, like, I heard within my spirit that we need to move away from where we were, because we were waiting at, at, at a particular place to actually get the bus to somewhere, where, to where we're actually going, to our destination. And I remember then, because I didn't want to interrupt him, so, you know, I just, I just, I just listened, and I was waiting for him to actually pause, you know, and then I will now tell him, that, let, let, let's move away from here. And just as I was waiting, just said, you know what, let's move away from here. <laughs> just said let's move away from here and as we moved away from where we were we had moved just a couple of distance away right there and then okay if a, 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 a van i think i'm not quite sure if it was a bus or something a van came crashing into where we were standing okay and if i remember correctly there was actually a guy that was actually knocked down okay the, the the van actually um knocked the person down. i don't know if the person died or whatever but the, you can imagine that that was that was the holy spirit prompting us the holy spirit prompting us to move okay so it's about your yieldedness is about your obedience okay now we would have been two people filled with the holy ghost you know saved tongue talking you know but died and we had our old lives ahead of us. But our old lives could have been cut short at that moment. All right. So there's something about us just being obedient. Obedient to, to the written word of God, okay, that we see in scriptures. Obedient to the spoken word, the words you receive in the place of prayer, the words that the Holy One speaks to your heart, ministers to you. It's important. Our obedience is important. God wants us to be willing and he wants us to be obedient. Hallelujah. Okay. Now. I said something, I remember when I, when I was preparing this this afternoon, something came to me. It's, it's like obedience is like, it's, your deliverance is not always, uh, is not always spelt as deliverance. It's not always spelt as D-E-L-I-V-E-R-A-N-C-E, -E -E, for example, okay? Most of the time, your deliverance is spelt as O-B-E-Y. You just obey. God needs us to obey. In your obedience is your deliverance. In your obedience is your fulfillment. Okay? In your obedience is your deliverance. In your obedience is your fulfillment. Just like my obedience was in my healing. Or should I say my healing was in my obedience? When I when when I was when I was flowing, um, when I had the, the, the flow of blood consistently for weeks going on, okay, over three weeks, the flow of blood, okay, and it was going on non-stop. But the Holy Spirit ministered to me and told me to stop taking a particular food. If I did not obey, I could have prayed from to, I could have still been praying. I could have still even maybe still taking medication and maybe still having all those side effects. You understand all the side effects might still be there the medication might still be there i would have still been praying making my confession you know but the wisdom of god is in you receiving instruction that you will be obedient to there is no use in you praying okay if you receive instruction and you don't obey or you are not in obedience to the instruction so it is important the purpose of you praying is so as to receive instruction to receive direction to receive guidance as per how to go about things so god this is your plan for my life but how do i navigate it how do i go about it how do i access it okay because it is important okay Sometimes healing is felt as obedience. So if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will. It is certain that you will eat it because that is what the word of God says. Okay. The word of God does not lie. Bible says, let God be true and every man a lie. The word of God is truth. Okay. Bible says in Psalms, thy word is truth. Hallelujah. The word of God is truth. There is, there is no lie in it. The word of God does not have the ability, the 
propensity to lie, okay? So we must recognize that, okay? I could have ignored it, the, the leading, the divine counsel, okay? And I would have gone on, you know, still being sick in body with the flow of blood, okay? So the thing is this, because you are a spirit, you are capable, okay, of receiving direction. You are capable of receiving guidance in your spirit, okay? And it's extremely important, this is extremely important in you fulfilling the will of God. You being led by the spirit is important in you being able to actually fulfill the will of God. And one of the things I always say, I always say this, okay, that the things of the spirit are to be taught because they are to be learned. The reason why they are to be taught is because they are to be learned, okay? Why? Because God wants you to come to the place of rich experience of his reality. If God is not just an issue of what is written in, in scripture. It's not just about it's not just when I say what is not just an issue of what is written in scripture, it's not just about ink on paper, it's about you coming to a rich experience of God's word. God needs you and wants you, okay, to actually live out the fullness of his will, okay, which is found in his word. So there is ultimately no following of God's plan without you being led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so learning to be led by the Holy Spirit is a primary. Um, is a primary thing or is a, it's, it's, it's a primary way, okay, for us to actually receive um, our ability in, in obeying God. You can't obey what you have not received, okay? You can't obey instruction that has not been received. In other words, there is no obedience without understanding, okay, the leading of the Father. There is no obedience without understanding the will of God. Now, I said, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. And I'm going to read this in uh, KJV translation. I'm going to read this in KJV translation. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? So more than you want to be led of God, excuse me, more than you want to be led of God, God wants to lead and direct you. Let me say that again. More than you want to be led or instructed or directed of God, God wants to lead, he wants to instruct, and he wants to direct you. Okay? We see that in scripture. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay? So it is the will of an earthly father to direct, to instruct, okay, a child or his child. That same way, God wants to lead you. He wants to direct you. Okay? Psalm chapter 32, verse 8. God's word says, I will instruct thee. I will instruct thee. That is God's word to you. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee. I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will guide you. Isn't that, isn't that lovely? And that is a reality that God wants us to come into. He wants us to come into this reality of in daily instructing us, of in guiding us. Okay, of in teaching us. And that's why the Bible says, look, you've got the Holy Spirit. He says, I'll be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Okay, my husband loves to call him the most excellent teacher. The most excellent teacher is in you. You have a more sure guide in you. Okay, is, is, is the guide of the Holy Spirit is, is more sure than a sat nav, all right? We have sat navs in our cars and all that, but there is a surer guide and he is the Holy Spirit. He is the person of the Holy Spirit. He's not a thing, he's a person. And as a person, he wants to guide you. He wants to teach you. He wants to instruct you. You know, I'm a teacher, okay? I'm a teacher of maths, all right? And one of the things that I do when I go to the classroom is that I instruct kids. I teach kids, okay, what to do, all right? I show them different 
different ways of solving the same math problem. So for example, a mathematical problem might have more than one way of solving the same problem. And I show them the different ways and I tell them, okay, so you take, you now choose, okay, the, 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 the method you want to use in solving this problem, okay? Why? Because there's something about them being free, being able to freely, you know, um, use that method. The method they prefer, it works best when they actually have a, 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 a choice, a preference. You will see that they learn better that way. The same way the Holy Spirit is telling you. He's saying, look, I want to instruct you. I want to instruct you in the way of life. I want to teach you, okay, in the way that you should go, okay? So in your business, the Holy Spirit says, look, I want to teach you. It's not just in, you know, like like, like my husband was saying, it's not just about spiritual matters. The Holy Spirit is, is he, he, he understands physics. He understands the human anatomy. Okay, and he was able to tell me, stop taking that food in excess. Okay, so he's able, he understands things. All right, he knows things. He was before all things. Okay, so it's important for us to realize that. So he said, I will instruct you, I will teach you, and I will guide you. So the primary way, the primary way God is going to lead you is by his spirit. The primary way God is going to lead you is by the Holy Spirit in dwelling your innermost being, okay? The Holy Spirit in dwelling your spirit. In other words, you can only, uh, you can only uh, fully sat um, fulfill the will of God, okay? By you following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will guide you, okay? It's like you go to, it's like you go to a museum. When you go to a museum, you have guides, Okay, what are the guides meant to do? They are meant to guide you. Okay, if whichever direct, whichever part of the museum you want to go into, they will, and they will talk to you. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will, they will intimate you. They will, they will teach you. Okay, literally tell you about those artifacts, those things. Okay, their origin and and all that. The Holy Spirit also wants to intimate you about the things regarding your life, about the things regarding your purpose, regarding the plan of God for your life. In at many a times as believers. We sit there thinking, oh, we know best oh, concerning the issues of our lives. No, that, that is stupidity, that is foolishness, and that is great folly, okay? So in order for us to fully achieve and to fulfill the will of God, we must learn to depend heavily upon the leading, the instruction, the guidance of the Holy One in teaching us, guiding us into all truth. Hallelujah. So, we have the ability, okay, to receive that which the Holy Spirit communicates to us through our human spirit. We have that ability. And even in our minds, we can actually conceive of it. That's why the Bible says, but we have the mind of Christ, okay? Because it's not just meant to stay in our heart, in our spirit, okay? There has to be th that, that, that working of, of, of the will of God, the intention of God from within our spirit into our soul, okay? Whereby we are able to actually bring it forth, all right, into this physical realm. I'm going to read to us um, Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Okay, so uh, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Now, one of the things that, 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 I, that I said is that we must actually get to the place where we realize, okay, we must come to the place where we get God's direction clear in our spirit before we can go ahead to actually act on it, okay? So Colossians 4 verse 12, it says uh, that we read earlier. I'm going to now read it in AMPC translation. Colossians 4 verse 12, I'm reading it in Amplified Classic. It says, Epaphras, who is one of yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. He's always striving for you earnestly in his prayers, pleading that you may, as persons of right character and clear conviction, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth, stand firm and mature in spiritual growth. How? Convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Convinced and fully assured 
in everything willed by God. So there is no action many a times in our lives because we've not gotten to the place of full conviction. And the prayer to that church in, in, in Colossae, okay? Now, it's important. So we must live daily expecting to be led by God. It says there, convinced and fully assured in everything. God doesn't want you to be assured partly of his will for your life. He needs you to be assured that he's got your back, like I said. He needs you to be assured that there is there is there, 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 there is going to there is no failure of you in, in the working and in the fulfillment of God's plan. Why? As long as you are open to the leading and the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Now, does that mean that you might not fall along the way? No. It doesn't mean that you will not encounter difficulties. No. It doesn't mean that, that you will not go through hard times, okay? in the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. I mean, ask Apostle Paul, he'll tell you, okay, if, if he faced shipwrecks, he faced, he faced, you know, uh, perils in the night, he faced, he faced even, even the brethren, you know, where, where, where showed him a difficult time, all right? He, he faced dangers, all manners of dangers, you know, he, he, he was, you know, the time that he was left for dead, all right? He went through challenges, even in the fulfillment of the plan of God for his life. But in it all, you'll be able to fully say at the end of it all, like Paul said, I fought the fight, I've run the race. Okay, you'll be able to say with, with great conviction that I've done according to the purpose and the will of God. All right. And so when you get before God, because that is the ultimate for us to, to, to get before the Father and to receive the Father telling us, Well done, thou good and faithful servant okay it is important that is important okay it is not just about the accolades of men you know the applauds of men what of the applaud of god are you actually walking in line okay with the plan of god it's not just that you are walking towards that plan but it's about are you doing it are you walking in in the will of god concerning even the fulfillment of the plan of, of god amen so that is really important. So I said you were created and designed with the ability, okay, to know God's will. Jeremiah tells us something. He says in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, he says, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Doesn't that sound like what um, Luke said in the book of Luke, somewhere in chapter um, chapter 11? He says that he that seeketh, findeth. He that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. When you seek, you will find. It is a principle of God's word. If you seek to know the will of God's word, I mean the will of God, if you seek to be obedient, okay, you will find, you will find the ease, you will find grace, okay, for obedience. Let me tell you something, there is grace. There is grace, okay, for obedience. That's why the Bible says that we should come boldly to the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know, and at times, in, for actually many times, if not all the time, in the fulfillment of God's plan for our lives, okay, in working out the plan of God, okay, here a little, there a little, we need the grace. We need the help of God. We need God's mercy in able to actually fulfill his purpose and and his intention over our lives because many times the enemy will try to dissuade you. I mean, that's not possible. It's not possible for you to actually accomplish the plan of God. I dare say it is possible because we saw it there in Colossians 4, verse 12. Okay, where 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 Epaphras was playing. I I pray that 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 uh, that you will actually come, you will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. You will reach a place of, of full conviction. You stand as persons of right character and clear convictions as a if I actually puts it, right character and clear conviction, you'll be fully convinced of all the will of God. Not partially convinced, but a full conviction of what God's will and what God's plan is at that point in time. You are not walking based on, on maybe, no, there is no maybe. You are walking based on the assurance of God's leading, okay, of God's will concerning that particular endeavor or thing that you 
are doing. So it's important for us to, 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 to inquire of God because when you inquire of the Lord, you will receive direction of the Lord. And we saw that so many times in the life of, uh, what's his name, of, of um, David. Many a time the Bible will talk about David that he inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. We must never get to that place where in our lives we think, oh, because I did it this way last time it worked. So let me do it. Let me do it that way. No, no. What if that is not how it's meant to be done? Okay, if you inquired of the Lord the first time and God directed you and instructed you in how to go about things, why not inquire of the Lord again in this particular, even if it's the same issue that came up again? Okay, and we saw that in the life of, 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 of David, who when he was, he was faced with the nation, a nation came against him. Okay, they wanted to fight with him. And he, the Bible tells us, actually, let's, let's go to it. Um, in 1 Samuel, First Samuel chapter 20, 23, 20, chapter 23, chapter 23, verse 4, yep. Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. David inquired of the Lord yet again. You see that? That implies that he must have inquired of the Lord previously. I mean, you don't say... Um, this person, this person did this thing again to me, except that the person had done it previously. <laughs> you understand? Okay. So the Bible says there, then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, arise, go down to killer for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. Arise, go on to killer for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. Now I'm not going to spend so much time talking about, um, you know, um, how to be led by the Holy Spirit or understanding how, to, how um, the leadings, the various ways in which the Holy Spirit leads you because I did I did an exhaustive um, teaching on that sometimes last month. So please feel free, check um, check us on Facebook. The teachings are on Facebook. They're also on our landing page. Okay, check it and um, you'll be blessed because I, I, I actually taught, you know, at using practical examples of how to be led by the Holy Spirit. So, but because that's not what we're, I'm actually focusing on today. I'm focusing on obedience, your obedience, your willingness, okay, to the plan of God, to the purpose of God, to the will of God yields rich dividends. It's, 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 there, there is nothing to be compared to it, not just in your physical prosperity, but even in the prosperity of your soul, in the prosperity of your emotions. There is nothing as satisfying as your obedience to the will of God. Okay, so it pays to serve God. And if you think your obedience to God, you know, costs you, then you really should realize what your disobedience actually does. Disobedience opens you up, okay? To It opens up the doors. It opens up portals for the enemy to actually gain access, all right? So if you think obedience to God is going to cost you, then you really need to think again because disobedience does way worse, okay? So you will, and, and the thing is this, is about us realizing that we really don't, have a choice okay it's not we we are, we are not we don't get to choose what we what we want to be in life you know i i hear people you know all manner of things when people are making motivational speeches and all this you can be whatever you want to be you can be anything you want to be no you i can't be anything i want to be because i did not create myself i can't be whatever i want to be because i did not save myself Let's do, take a look at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. You know, and this is important. At times, I even hear parents telling kids, yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good to the area, but it's just, there's just something wrong about it because it doesn't make scriptural sense. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Now, this was Paul's account. This was the Apostle Paul, okay? And Apostle Paul put it like this. He says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. In other words, I am crucified, yet I live. If you're crucified, that means you're dead. But Paul is saying, look, yet I live. In other words, I am alive. Then he says, yet not I. In other words, I'm not the one that is alive. Hey, wait, wait, Paul, Paul, Paul. Pause the second. What exactly are you saying? Look at what he says. It says, but Christ liveth in me. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who did what? Who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? So it's like this. Paul is saying, my life is not mine. Paul is saying, actually, the life I'm living, I'm living the life of the Son of God. So I, I, am, I can't tell myself I will be whatever I want to be because it's not my life. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. Your bodies are not your own. You are not your own. Do you get that? Your bodies are not your own. So you cannot just do anything, be anything. That means I can't live in this flesh, any life. I can't just say, okay, you know what? Because, you know, I, if I give myself to it, I can actually decide I want to be a medical doctor. No, 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 no. I, 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 I want to be a fashion designer. No, no, no. I've got to be what the designer he that fashioned me, that formed me, you know, that knew me before I was born. I've got to be exactly what he proposed in his mind for me. Okay? That means that that must be what I am pursuing, what I'm walking towards. Okay? And our uh, teaching on consecration last week. Okay? So he said, hey, you are not your own. Paul said it explicitly to the church at Corinth there. Your bodies are not your own. Why did he say that? First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23 tells us that you have been bought with a price. You have been bought with a price. And that is why you are not your own. Why? Because you did not save yourself. Okay? So because you didn't save yourself, Actually, let, let's take a look at this scripture. Um, uh, what scripture is that? It's 2 Corinthians. Someone say 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter, let's take a look at chapter 5. Chapter 5, um, verse 14. Fantastic. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Let's see. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Okay? The love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Verse 15, this is where we're going. And that he died for all that they should live, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him. Look at that. He says, and, he, and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him. Him who, him who died for them and rose again. So in other words, our lives are meant to be lived unto him who died for us and rose again for us. And we all know that's the Lord Jesus. So it's all about the grand plan of God for your life. Okay. It's not about what you want. Okay. Or what seems to be good in your eyes or what seems to be Oh, what my dad wants for me, what my mom wants for me, or what I want for myself. No, it's about he that gave himself for us, that died for us, and that rose again for us. Okay? Now, the, 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 the fact remains that we are to live our lives for him. Our lives are to be only pleasing unto him. In fact, Paul said, in, let, let's look at Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Paul said something there. He said, where, verse 19, Whereupon, O Greek King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Somebody said, well, me, I'm not a vision. You don't need to have a vision. <laughs> it's, not just, it's not just in visions that you can be disobedient. The word of God, the written word of God, Okay, is 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 the Bible calls it the more sure word of prophecy, is is more sure than any vision you will ever have. 
Okay? So your disobedience to God's word or your disobedience, okay, to the word of prophecy, to the spoken word, okay, or to the written word is as good as your disobedience to any heavenly vision that you might ever receive. Paul said, hey, he said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. How many of us will be able to actually stand before the Father in eternity and say, Father, I was not disobedient to what you called me to. I was not disobedient in the fulfilling of your plan or, or in actually bringing about the fullness of your plan. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about a man, a man by the name of uh, John G. Lake. Okay, John G. Lake, he left what he actually did. He had a thriving business, okay? And he left the business to go to Africa, okay, for missionary work. So he had a thriving business, but he left the business to go to Africa and he established hundreds of churches that still exist today. That is obedience. That is obedience. Because I'm telling you, it's not easy for you. It's not naturally easy for you to leave what you see that is working, that is thriving, that your that your family is 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 uh feeding off on, you know, in that sense. And you go to a place and you say you want to go and be a missionary. It's not it's not logical, okay? But the plan and the purpose of God for your life does not always follow logic. Okay, it does not always follow logic. It wasn't logical for Abraham to have left his father's house. Okay, to have left his, his, the, the comfort of, of, the, of, the, of his known region to a place that is not even as if God said, okay, you go there. No, God said, as you're good, I will show you the place. I will show you. So it's not as if I had a particular place in mind. Okay, but God was telling him, he said, look, I will show you the place. It's not, the, the, the plan of God might not always be logical. But there's something about obedience, your yieldedness, that brings you to the place of great fulfillment, that brings forth that 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 brings forth rich dividends in your life. Okay, I remember Ryan Bonke. Ryan Bonke believed in the vision of for, for a blood-washed Africa. He believed in it. Okay, he believed in that vision for a blood-bought Africa, and through his life. He did, he did, he did spectacularly. Hallelujah. He did spectacularly in spite of great challenges that he faced. Okay. He made massive and extraordinary impact, not only in Africa, but around the world. Okay. Catherine Coleman, a lady, you know, that, 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 you know, so many people, um, know about you know Kathleen Kuhlman she 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 actually returned okay from the shame of a failed and short-lived marriage with a fresh consecration and an you know outstanding healing ministry she she came forth blazing in the power and in the strength of God what through obedience through obedience it wasn't easy okay she, because you, you, you have to consider in the time, in, in, in the day, somebody that, 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 had, uh, that had a failed marriage, you can imagine the ridicule she had to face, okay? And even in this time, you know, still the same thing applies, but not as, as, not, not, not as it was back then. Also, Maria, Maria Woodward Ether, I remember talking about Maria Woodward Ether last week. She gave herself in obedience, in spite of, of the opposition, you know, of agenda. She gave herself, gave herself in obedience. And the opposition, there was opposition not just about the gender, there was also opposition about, about our healing ministry, okay? There was great opposition, but she went on to having a powerful and an outstanding ministry in life. Actually, I'm going to read to us, I'm going to read to us, um, just very quickly, a part about um, the life of Kathleen Kuhlman. I'm going to read something, just an account that Robert, Robert Leiden wrote. Okay, he said, um, a five-year-old boy crippled from birth walked to Kathleen's platform without assistance. So this boy had been crippled from birth, okay, but then um, he, was, he was obviously ill in the meeting and was able to walk without assistance onto the platform. Another, a woman who had been crippled and confined to a wheelchair for 12 years, walked to the platform without the aid of her husband. A man who had received a pacemaker eight months, I love this, he had received a pacemaker eight months earlier, felt intense pain in his chest after Kathleen laid hands on him. Returning home, he found the scar was gone. 
Okay, this car where the pacemaker was, was gone, okay? So this car was gone from his chest where the pacemaker had been implanted. Later, when the doctor took x-rays, he discovered the pacemaker was gone and the man's heart was healed. The pacemaker was gone and the man's heart was healed. It was common for tumors to dissolve, cancers to fall off, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, migraine headaches were healed instantly. It would be impossible to list all the miracles that the ministry of Kathleen Kuhlman witnessed. God alone knows. Now, you, you can see there, okay, this woman, a great woman of God, great, great woman of God, okay, but she returned from a place of shame. For some people, it would have been, it would have been easier for us to, for, for her to just say, you know what, I, I, I don't want anything to have to do with ministry. I can't, I'm not even going to bother because of what uh, the ridicule, what people are going to say. But like I said, if you have eternity at heart, you will not be considering what men are going to say. What must be foremost in your mind is what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying about this? Okay, so it is important. All right, it is very important. And I think I'm just going to stop here because of time so that we can actually have time to actually answer questions. But... Um, I'm going to I'm going to read this scripture once again. I'm going to read a scripture in Proverbs and I'm going to stop here. Because like I said, if you think following God's plan for your life, being obedient to God is difficult, then I really need you to reconsider. I want you to check Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15. And I'm going to pause there. Proverbs 13, verse 15. He says, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. The way of the transgressors is hard. The way of the transgressors is hard. In other words, the ways of the disobedient is hard. Okay, so there are tests and trials in the ways of the obedient. Don't get me wrong. You will, you will go through tests, you will go through trials, but in it all, you can say confidently, the Lord is with me. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is a lifter up of my head, okay? The way of the transgressor, however, the transgressor cannot boldly put his hand to his chest and say, ah, God is with me. <laughs> because God is not, it, it, might, it might be in you, but he's not, his hands are not on it. It's like, it's like this. There is a plan of God that is already blessed. And then there is a plan that I'm now praying, God, help me bless the plan. That's stupidity. There's already a blessed plan. Go for the blessed plan. Hallelujah. Go for the blessed plan. Okay? So God is faithful. He is just to deliver you. However, you must realize that the way of the transgressor, the way of the disobedient is hard. Obedience is not hard. Even though the enemy will try to persuade you that it is, hard is disobedience, hard, okay, is transgression, hard is you ignoring the will, the purpose, and the plan of God for your life. That is where you will, one will experience hardship. That is where you will not be able to say that, you know, I know fully well that God has my back. You can receive mercy. You can receive mercy because there is always mercy, okay? The mercy always cries out. There is mercy, but then you must know to cry out for it. But why go for mercy when you can walk in his will? When you can walk in his will, hallelujah. When you can walk in the plan that is already blessed. The plan of God is already blessed, hallelujah. So the plan of God is not difficult. The will of God is not hard. Obedience is not hard for you. The enemy will try to dissuade you otherwise, okay? But realize that the way of the wicked, in this case, the way of transgressors or the way of, of the disobedient is hard. Hallelujah, amen. So I'm just gonna pray. And Father Lord, we just thank you thank you for your word thank you for your spirit that has um, helped us in in going through and in receiving instruction in your word father we receive grace 
to help. Father, Lord, oh God, even to stand steady and to stand strong in obedience and in, in total willingness and in yieldedness to your will and to your plans, Father, for our individual lives. Father, we thank you for the help of your spirit. We thank you for the ministry of angels. We thank you for the blessed life that you have called us to lead. Thank you, Father, because we are willing and we are obedient and therefore we will eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So while we are still recording, um, while we're still online, let's uh, see if we have any questions. Do we have any questions today? Any questions? Yes. Um, um, good evening. Uh, I have a question. You know when you said um what what um you know when God gives you like a plan in the will of God and you said we are not willing. How can mm -hmm. we? What can we do to actually be willing? Because what that's my question. How can you? What can you do? Can you see that you have to pray to actually be willing to actually obey God's will? Because sometimes okay. it might look naturally hard. Our physical mm -hmm. flesh is weak. Sometimes. Okay. So willingness is a thing of choice. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Willingness is a thing of choice. So think of it like this. Think of it. How did you get saved? Oh, my choice. I want well, the to... choice. You were willing to be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Okay. okay. So okay. you chose to be saved the same way you will to do the will of God, the plan of God. You submit yourself to the plan of God. And if this is not that, you know, last week when we we're talking about consecration, this is not something you do in once in, in one off. It's not a one off thing that you do. It's something that you, you, because like you said, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. Okay. So you submit yourself daily to doing the will of God. Okay. You give yourself only to doing God's will, but it is first a decision that you have to make. Otherwise, okay. God would have made everyone saved. And God is not. God did not make us as as um, robots. He didn't make us as uh, what's it called? He didn't make us as as machines. He made us as human beings with the ability to choose the willpower. Okay, and He expects us to to exercise our willpower. So much so, Joshua, Joshua said, he said, choose this day whom you will serve. He said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So it's a choice. Okay. Is a choice for you to submit yourself to the plan of God. Did you see that? that the, remember the scripture that I read to us that Paul said, he said, I was not disobedient in fulfilling the heavenly. Your obedience has to do with your will. Remember, we started off with that. Willingness is a choice that you make. Nobody can make you willing. God, even God, cannot make you willing. You have to be willing yourself. You have to choose and decide. I am willing to do the will of God. You tell yourself, you make it part of your confession. Mm -hmm. Bumi, you're willing to do the will of God. You will fulfill the will of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Whether you find it convenient, whether I find it convenient or not, it's not about my convenience. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Was it convenient for Jesus to go on the cross? It wasn't. Hallelujah. But mm -hmm. I, I give myself over to fulfilling God's will, to fulfilling. Remember, look, look, at, look at this lady that I talked about just earlier, um, Catherine Kuhlman. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy for her as a woman, number one, agenda. Huh? Number two, she was divorced. Uh -huh. Okay? So it wasn't easy for her, but she gave herself, she made herself willing to do the will of God. And each one of us, too, uh, uh, too, too, too taking time with the word. You see, the word of God, the Bible talks about the word of God, okay, is... is uh, is a seed that when we plant into our hearts, okay, it's, it can actually condition our heart. The word of God can condition our heart. It can, it, it's like, you know, you know what you do, what, what do farmers do? When they want to, when they, when before they farm, they clear the soil, don't they? Mm -hmm. 
they clear the soil, they clear it of debris, they clear it of, 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 of trees, you know, and of, of plants. They clear the soil, making it ready for the seed to be planted. The same way when we take time, so if you if you meditate upon the scripture, okay, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. I give myself to doing, the, like, like Jesus said, you know, I give myself to doing the will of the Father. And you meditate consistently upon such scriptures, consecrating yourself to the purpose and the plan of God, you will find out it doesn't mean that you won't that there won't be some form of resistance at times in in in, in fulfilling the will of God, but it will, you will be at ease. It will be easier, okay, for you to actually fulfill the will of God. The same way I can go into my garden now, and you know I just make a hole somewhere in the ground and plant a seed. Okay, I can plant that seed, but that seed is going to be, what's it called? Uh, the, the other plants, if I don't clear the soil first, the other plants there nearby are going to compete, okay, for nutrients, okay, that that seed ought to actually benefit of. Does that make sense? So you need to first, you do, first of all, the word of God is a seed that helps to condition our hearts to actually fulfilling and, and giving room to the will of God. Okay, and prayer too, like I said, it's give yourself to, to, to prayer, give yourself to meditation of the word. Those are things that help you in, in actually um, walking in the will of God. Thank you very much, Pastor B. You're welcome. Um, Pastor B, a question that came in when you were talking. Okay. Um, it says, what do you do if God instructs you to do something, but you can't bring yourself to obey? However, you want to obey, it will just cost you too much to obey. How do you go about it? Okay, what did I say earlier? He said, and I realized this, Jesus many a times, he spoke, um, he spoke and he had to repeat himself. And that is, that is actually the way a teacher must, must, must be ready to. When we talk about obedience, I just read to us a scripture that talks about what disobedience. Now, remember, I gave us a lot of I gave us a lot of examples. Imagine if, like I said, when um, I felt led, uh, when when I felt um, the Holy Spirit ministering to me that we should move away from where we were standing while my uh, my husband and I were, were walk, taking a walk down and we're at the bus stop. I, imagine if my husband too had ignored that instruction. Are you telling me? that disobedient i know there are times that it seems difficult but i'm trying to paint an image in your heart that life will really become difficult when we live in disobedience disobedience will make our lives difficult let me tell you something the enemy is trying to sell a product to you and what is the enemy trying to sell to you right now he's trying to sell disobedience ah you know, this thing, uh, the life doesn't have to be like this. Now it doesn't have to be like this. This is this is too this is this is why not go this way. I'm telling you, if you go with that and you don't go with what you know in your heart to be the will of God, then you will actually realize that there is great difficulty. Think of it this way: when did when the devil was tempting Eve? In the garden, and he told Eve, said, "Ah, if you it's because uh, God knows that the day you eat of it, you you will know good from evil. If 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 the devil had told Eve what the repercussion of a disobedience to instruction of God's word was, do you think Eve would have actually um, gone falling for for his lies? She won't. So the enemy, what he does is he, he wraps disobedience." He wraps it in like a what do you call it? He wraps it in like uh, uh, you know a gift. It's like it's like a wrapping paper, okay? A wrapping paper. When you when you when you get a gift and you see it, it is it is well wrapped up. What do you notice? You notice that you have to open the gift. It looks nice, but do you know that somebody can actually send you a box of vipers, well wrapped, nicely decorated, because it's nicely decorated, and another gift that it looks so insignificant, okay? So for example, if somebody gets you a lovely wristwatch, for example, even though it's a small gift, okay? 
well, it, maybe they, they might not even do the packaging well. They might not even wrap it looking, you know, so neat and tidy. And then somebody else brings a massive package, okay? And in that package is a snakes. And then they, you know, they, they go ahead and they, they, they tie a lovely looking ribbon on it with a lovely looking card and they present it to you. If you look at it at face value, from the two gifts, which one do you think will be more expensive or which one do you think will be better? You know, people might say, oh, the bigger gift might be better and they will go for that because it looks more appealing. So what the enemy does is he makes disobedience seem appealing, okay? He makes it look appealing to you, all right? He gives you every reason under the heaven, under the sun, why you should go for that, all right? But you must learn to realize all right, that every, they're, they're saying that not everything that glitters is gold. The will of God, it might not necessarily seem appealing. Bible says there's a way that seems right unto a man, but ends up in destruction, okay? So you might, you must realize that the, when the enemy tries to sell you his lies, the end of it is massive destruction, okay? It can even end in repercussion of, of loss of family, of loss of family, family life, or you know, lo loss of loved ones. You don't you don't want to get your hand in, in into such um nonsense. You really don't want to. The best thing is for you to stick with the plan of God. Like I said, it might not always be easy, okay? But in you fulfilling, in you obedient being obedient to the plan of God you will find great fulfillment. And let me tell you something, even after doing all that you think, oh, it will bring good, it, will, it, will, it, 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 it looks elaborate, it looks this, it looks that, it looks glam. Because it's not about glamour, it's not about glamour. <laughs> okay, the plan of God is not about glamour. It might even seem elaborate. Okay, things, that thing that might seem, oh, it, let, let's, let's do this. It's not about how tech it is. No, no, no. Okay, it's about the it's about the fact that is it the plan of God? Are you being obedient? Are you you see if you if you know what the will of God is, if the spirit of God is leading you in one direction, okay, why do you want to go in disobedience? Okay, why do you want to go against the word of your lover, the one that says, I know my thoughts towards you, they are thoughts of good. So the question is this, do you really think you know more than God? Because you need to ask yourself that question. Do you really, and that's why I started by saying that you don't, you, the, the, the plans for your life, you don't have a better plan for your life than God actually has for your life, okay? God wants you, he wants his plan to be made beautiful in your life. He wants to reveal his plan in such a beautiful and awesome way in your life. But the enemy will try to dissuade you otherwise. My advice is the word advice. Go with obedience all the time. Be obedient. Like Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Be obedient to the instruction, the leading and the direction of God. Don't for a moment think that because this thing is going to be so quick, it, it, it only leads to destruction, okay? It can lead to destruction of life. It can lead to destruction of property, okay? It can lead to destruction. And you, you don't want at the end of days now be like, okay, God, I, I actually know better. I should have done better, okay? I hope that has been able to, um, I hope I've been able to answer that question. Thank you for that, Pastor B. Um, that was the only question that came. Okay, fantastic. All right. Okay, so it was lovely um, having us, um, everyone. So we look forward to um, again next week. Uh, when we're, we're going to go on next week in this um, series of teaching about following God's plan for your life. It's going to be exciting. It's an exciting time in the world. So um, please remember to share this. Um, you've been blessed by this. Share this um, on your net, on your different uh, platforms. And the Lord bless you real good. Have a lovely week. And uh, remember... God bless you. Have a lovely week. God's word works. Amen.